power does not travel in words. But power is the result of relationship. The power comes after the result of the relationship you experience with the Holy Spirit. And there's a seek of power intimacy. Jesus had that incredible experience with his Father that gave him the ability to be able to fulfill the will of his Father. We've come so far, but now there remains incredible spiritual strongholds that can only be penetrated by the supernatural. We have got to rise up to a higher level of strategic spiritual warfare that will demolish the last stronghold of Satan in this last hour, we are going to have to have a supernatural manifestation. The power will only come after we have an experience with the Holy Ghost. God didn't ask you to do it in your own strength. He said, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. What I'm going to put in your mouth, you're going to root out. You're going to tear down. You're going to pull down. Don't you dare try until you get my word in your mouth. They filled Jesus with his humanity, with the Holy Ghost. And that's why you and I have got to have the same Holy Ghost if we're going to do the same work. There's a family waiting for you to witness. There's a church there that's dead, that's waiting for somebody with resurrection life and resurrection power, with the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead. God didn't ask you to do it in your own strength. He said, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. Well, praise the Lord. Good morning. Welcome to Live from Legacy. This is Greg Morrow greeting you today on behalf of Morris and Teresa Cirillo, the Ministry of World Evangelism. I'm standing on your incredible pavilion at the Morris Cirillo Legacy International Center. The amazing show fountains are over my shoulder. The beautiful replica Western Wailing Wall and I love the Inspiration Tower, 22 different languages proclaiming peace, love, and forgiveness. I want you to know today, we serve a God of peace, we serve a God of love, and we serve a God of forgiveness. That is how we can win the battle for our mind, because what we believe about God, Brother Trillo has been encouraging us, will either attract us to him, or if we let the enemy, the accuser, lie to us, somebody say the devil is a liar. If we will believe what the devil wants us to believe about God or about ourself, we will begin to lose this battle. I love what Brother Trillo said yesterday. You're seeing it on the board right now. This is why this is so important for you and for me. I want to encourage you. Today is the last day. Congratulations. Day six of this incredible winning the battle for your mind school of ministry. This is so important. I want to encourage you. We're going to take a few days after today, present some classic Morris Cirillo messages and moments and then we'll begin next week with course number three lord teach us to pray use these days 
to maybe re-watch some of these messages on Facebook, on YouTube. If you've got the book, I want to encourage you, devour it. If you don't have it, you can get it. The link is right there on the Facebook page. But look at what Brother Cirillo said to us yesterday. He's standing at the board right now. You're seeing this on your screen. I love this. He said, the mind is where the battle must be won and where the battle can be lost. But I declare to us today, Brother Cirillo is putting into us a militant, an active boldness. He reminded us that the kingdom of heaven, you see, the battle for our mind, this is what we're going to hear today. Winning the battle for our mind is not automatic. The blessings of God are not automatic. The Bible says that we must believe that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. There is a reward for putting the word of God into our mind, putting the word of God in front of our eyes. That word will do the work in us if we will just determine to make an investment in spending just a little more time in that word of God. David said, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Today, our focus is not on our problem, but our focus is on the word of the living God. I love what Brother Cirillo said yesterday. What a reminder. You're seeing him on the board right now. He said, God never promised to renovate or change or transform our old nature. That's not what this is all about. What God promised is to give us a new nature. Somebody say old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. I want to congratulate you today as we reconnect right now with God's servant. I want to tell you what Brother Thriller would always tell us as we came into these schools of ministry. He would say, open your spirit wide. I want you to hear the voice within the voice. The Bible says, if we believe his prophets, so shall we prosper. I declare that you and I are at a tipping point for the greatest harvest of blessing, the greatest harvest of peace in your mind, the greatest harvest of fear being broken off of your life. I declare that you and I are winning the battle because we're making decisions and we're taking steps toward God, toward his word. What a great step you've taken today. I want you to join me wherever you are, in giving honor to whom honor is due as we welcome to this final day of the Morris Cirillo winning the battle for your mind school of ministry to join me as I'm standing here at this incredible Morris Cirillo Legacy International Center in welcoming the man, the ministry, the breakthrough message of God's servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. They have divine power. Here's where we left off this morning. Say it, divine power. They have divine power to demolish Strongholds, not just to defeat them, but the weapons. Here we are, clothed with the armor that God supplies. Here we are in this battle using the weapons that God has put in our hands. And God says, those weapons have the power. They have divine power. Glory to God. I don't know what you're going through right now, where you're coming from, but I'm going to tell you, you've got divine power through the weapons that God has provided to demolish your enemy. What do we 
we do? We demolish arguments. Let's continue the scripture. We demolish every pretense that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And now we're going to move into the battlefield. We take captive every thought and we make it obedient to Christ. Now I want you to put that word thoughts into your spirit. If you're writing notes, write the word thoughts down. I want you to raise your right hand to the Father and I want you to say this with me tonight. I have the power, have the power to totally, totally demolish, demolish the, power the power of the enemy so they are non-existent. It's important that we understand that victory is not automatic. And it's important that we understand that victory is not guaranteed just simply because you have been born again and you're a child of God. I know this is hard to understand, but it's true. And even because you have the Spirit of God inside you, that does not mean that you are automatically going to have the victory over the tests, the trials, the temptation, the lies, and the attacks of the enemy. I wish it were true. I wish it were so. I wish it were different. I wish all you had to do was come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Give your life to him. Get saved. Be born again. I wish that that was all that was necessary. But it is not true. That's only the beginning. Our victory comes when we arm ourselves and we know how to resist the power of the enemy and we are programmed for aggressive action. I'm going to keep reading this scripture to you probably a dozen times. Why? Because your victory is not guaranteed. Your victory is not automatic. Unless you are willing to stand up here and become a soldier and press the battle. I don't think you heard what I said. There are thousands of you, and excuse me for talking to the television audience, but I have to do this. You're living a defeated life simply because of one reason. You allow the enemy to win in your spiritual life by default. It's not because he has greater power than what you have. It is because you don't pick up the battle and you don't line up as a soldier and you're not willing to press the battle. And if you're not willing to press the battle, he'll do it for you. think you heard what I said. You've got to become violent. If you don't believe it, you ask any 
and a soldier who's ever fought a war and you tell me if he is going to overcome his enemy by sitting in the foxhole and being passive and this church of Jesus Christ had better put off that spirit of passiveness and complacency and get mad at the devil and be willing to press the battle going to read the scripture to you again Matthew eleven twelve. and from you're going to probably memorize this before we leave here and from the days of John the Baptist until the present time the kingdom of heaven has endured violent assault And violent men, violent men, say it with me, violent men. See, some of you can't even say it. That's how weak you are. <laughs> Bound by your tradition. How many people in this building here have got problems and needs and circumstances that you got to have God do something about and you want him to do it now yeah. come on let me well then what are you sitting there for let's get a little violent about it it's not gonna rain out of heaven on you brother don't kid yourself I don't care whether you're Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Episcopalian, half-baked over, charismatic, Pentecostal. I don't care if you don't start doing it. Stirring up. If you don't start stirring up. What Paul wrote to Timothy. If you don't start stirring up. The gift which is in you. Matthew 11, 12, let me continue to read it to you from the original. And violent men do what? Seize them. Say the word seize. seize. Let me see you start doing some seizing here tonight. Come on. Come on. Start by opening your mouth and say seize it. Seize. Say I'm going to seize it. Seize. I'm going to stir up the gift. I'm going to stir it up. I'm going to stir it up. Come on. I'm going to stir it up. I'm going to seize it. I'm going to seize it. I'm going to seize it. You're going to press it. You're going to press it. You're going to press it. We're going out the battlefield. We're going to press the battle. Now our problem today is that most Christians really do know that there's a battle raging. I really don't care what traditional background we have or are. Most know that there is a battle raging. But there are three things about this spiritual battle that they do not understand. One, they don't know where the battle is taking place. And if you cannot locate the battlefield, you can't fight in this battle. Second, they don't know how Satan, who is the arch enemy, they don't know how he is attacking. And if we don't know how the enemy attacks. We don't know how to prepare for the battle. Thirdly, they know there's a battle raging, but they don't know how to defeat him. The apostle Peter wrote to a group of Christians 
that were severely distressed. They were undergoing tremendous trials and tremendous tests. And Peter admonished them. First Peter 1, 13. He said, Gird up the loins of your mind. You want to overcome the distress? You want to overcome the onslaughts of the enemy? The trials? Gird up the loins of your mind. Remember how we studied a few days ago how Paul wrote the book of Ephesians from prison chained to a Roman soldier the first piece of armor that a Roman soldier puts on as he prepares for battle is his belt straight you know why? because the belt tied around the soldier's waist gathered the short tunic that he wore. It kept the breastplate in place. And the belt also held the sword in its place. Without the belt, the soldier was loose and weak. His loins enabled him to fasten his armor close to him, whereby he was strengthened and he was better able to fight. Peter said, gird up the loins of your mind. Tighten them up. Gird them up. When the Roman soldier put the belt on, it indicated he was ready for the battle. He never tightened it up, brother, until it was time to fight. Turn up the loins of your mind. It's time to fight. When he loosened it up, brother, and he slackened it, it meant he was going off for duty. The lines refer to the chief seat of bodily strength. The body is knit to the lines. If the lines fail, the whole body fails. The lines we are to gird up, to strengthen, to get ready for of our heart and our mind, our innermost being, gird them up. 
our minds, our inner man. It's there where the acting, ruling part of us really resides. It's the center of our existence. It's where all the issues of life flow out of. It's the battlefield. It's where our thoughts, our emotions, our wills, our desires, our understanding, our reasoning power, our intentions are. Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. But we have the mind of Christ. down through the years. Remember that? And if in the natural world, before the coming of our Lord, the spiritual battle is going to rage. The natural battle is going to rage. At the same time, as the natural battle rages as never before as we get closer and closer and closer to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Remember what God warned us about yesterday? Be very careful about the cry of the world now which says from one end of the globe to the next, peace and safety. Because when the world feels like it has reached this euphoric state of peace, and the whole world is ready to disarm and tear down all of their nuclear armaments, at that moment, 
There is coming sudden destruction because the spirit of the Antichrist is in the world. And the spirit of the Antichrist is a deceiving spirit. And it is deceiving the people in the natural world. But now, this enemy's power wants to move not only in the natural realm, but he wants to come over here in the spiritual realm and he wants to lay an end time trip on the body of Christ and deceive it in these end times. Put it in your spirit. This is no game. Some people think, you know, because of the charismatic emphasis on praise and worship and victory and power and glory. They think that this idea of spiritual warfare is just something, you know, we kind of loosely do and it's a dance and a jingle and a jerk. Now I'm warning you. I'm warning you, I'm warning you, God is warning you that this battle is going to heat up, it's going to get hot, it's going to get intense, and it's not a play thing that's going to be able to be dealt with by a jerk and a jiggle and a dance and a hoop and a hop. It's going to be able to be dealt with because you are prepared. I've got news from the devil this morning. We got the best CIA organization. It's not controlled by Washington. It's not controlled by the KGB in Russia. It's not controlled from London and the House of Commons, but our intelligence system is under the divine control of the Holy Spirit. Now, this system, this system gives us the ability to see the plans of the enemy while he is laying them out. You know what this does for us? It gives us the spiritual jump. It gives us the spiritual edge. Because before the enemy gets a chance to launch this and shoot it at us, brother, we're already waiting for him. And we're saying, come on, devil, come on, come on, come on, come on. Now we're going to do something here in this school of ministry under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. As we unveil Satan's cycle of defeat that he is going to attempt to unleash and to entrap the people of God. In. God has revealed to us that Satan is ready to launch a massive counterattack against the victories that the Church of Jesus Christ have been experiencing. We're going to take dominion and we're going to take authority right now over five specific spirits before we go any further 
in this building this morning. When you hear the truth, the enemy tries to intimidate. And I want you to know this morning that intimidation opens the door to fear. And we are not going to give the devil one inch. I want you to say this together with me this morning. Intimidation, Intimidation. is a spirit. this morning that Satan doesn't want you to get this breakthrough where you will destroy the cycle of Satan's defeat. He'll bring every kind of distraction into your spirit. Now we're going to deal with something very deeply this morning. Remember what we said yesterday that if we're going to experience the victory, we're going to go have to go past the surface and we're going to go down into the root. Now you and I in the spirit world, under the message of the new anointing, we've been going here to the root for years. But now God has shown me that it's time for us who have received the message on the new anointing to go one step further and that the root actually has two tributaries. And you and I, for years, have been dealing with one in spiritual warfare, and that is the cause. But now, we not only will deal with the cause as we go past the surface, but we're going to go down into the root of the battlefield. And that's where we're going to go this morning. Everybody say this together with Brother Srila. Distraction, Distraction. Is, a spirit. is a spirit. How many of you know that hindrance is a spirit? Negative forces. How many of you know that the enemy constantly bombards you with the spirit of negativism? If we're going to break the cycle, Satan's cycle of defeat, we're going to have to be free of intimidation. We're going to have to be free of distraction. We're going to have to break through the walls of hindrance. We're going to have to destroy the spirit of negativism. Because negativism leads to doubt and fear and right now in this building this morning in the name of Jesus we're going to stand up and 
we're going to put our foot down in the name of Jesus and we're going to take power and we're going to take authority over the spirit of intimidation. We're going to take power and we're going to take authority over the spirit of distraction. We're going to take power and we're going to take authority over the negative spirits, doubt, fear, hindering walls.
Jesus now. We're going to raise our hands and we're going to put that spirit of aggressiveness into our spirit. And we're going to receive the violent, militant spirit of God. Well, you just go ahead and raise your hand right where you are. That same anointing that was upon Brother Cirillo is upon you right where you are right now. I want you to declare that I am not what the devil says I am, but I am what God says I am. And today I'm stepping in to my victorious, clean, free, pure mind of Christ. Somebody say, I have the mind of Christ. I want to congratulate you today. I feel the presence and the power. I feel the impartation from this incredible winning the battle for your mind, prophetic school of ministry, doing a work inside of you that you do not even have the full idea of what we have just experienced together these past six days. I want to encourage you, review your emails, watch the videos again. We're going to take several days now and share some powerful, uplifting Mars Cirillo moments as we prepare next week to begin School of Ministry session number three, Lord, teach us to pray. And I want to encourage you, go ahead, get your copy of Lord Teach Us to Pray so that you have it when we begin next week. You might want to also get a copy of the incredible 1700 page Mara Cirillo Prayer Study Bible. Here's what I want to say to us today. By tomorrow, you'll receive your quiz. Certificates are now beginning to be processed for the Unity and the Spirit. School of Ministry. I want to encourage you today. We haven't asked you all week to do anything special financially. Many of you have given. Thank you for your gifts. But I want to let you know that the way that I have discovered to connect to this anointing is to serve it, is to honor it, and is to sow into it. And you are doing an incredible thing by staying connected to this Facebook Live every day. I want to urge you to use the donate button today. What a great day this would be if every single one of us that have been blessed would do something just to sow an offering of thanksgiving for what this school of ministry has meant to us. I believe the anointing we sow into is the anointing we receive. You sent something all week. And I believe there is something that's coming into your mind. Change is coming to you. Peace is coming to you. I want to ask everybody to do something. You can use the link. If you'd like to just go onto the website to sow your breakthrough offering, you can use the donate button. Those of you that are in different nations of the world on the page today are wiring instructions. If you wire a gift, I want you to put the word school of ministry, S-O-M, as the description for your gift. But I just believe that God is honored when we worship him with our giving. We want to express our thanks to the ministry of Dr. Cirillo, who is making an incredible effort, an incredible investment in your life, in your family, in your ministry, bringing these messages to you every day on a full scholarship. If everybody will do something, whether it's $10 or $20 or $100, 
however the Lord has blessed you, but I want to just encourage you to do something. Jerry and I are going to be doing something. You're going to see me do it right on the page as we're sharing these few moments together. It's an offering of thanksgiving. I want to bless you today. I want to tell you how proud I know that Mara Cirillo is watching from the portals of glory as you are being blessed. Your comments are amazing. I want to thank you for your comments. I want to thank you for your prayer requests. Continue to share them. We share those with Teresa. We share those with our team. We want to thank you for taking the time. The Bible says Jesus healed 10 lepers. He did something great for 10 lepers and only one came back. And you are so thankful and you honor the Lord and you honor this special ministry of Facebook Live, YouTube, bringing the school of ministry by sharing your words. And they're such an encouragement to us and they really just fire us up to know what God is doing in your life. I want us to say this together. Somebody say, I have a 100% free, 100% pure, 100% victorious mind of Christ, 100% of the time. Well, I feel Jesus in this place. I can't wait for many of you to come to Legacy. We're going to celebrate you. You're going to bring your certificates. We're going to have you stand here on the pavilion in the theater. I don't even know where. I don't know where we're going to contain when these doors open and the world opens up again. But what a great opportunity while we're waiting for that to be able to connect with you every day in this special way. Well, I want somebody to declare I'm a part of God's end time plan. God is taking me step by step and I'm not looking at the bigness of my need. I'm not looking at my lack, but I'm looking at the bigness of my God because he is taking me step by step. I want you to know that's happening. Stay connected. And each step is a miracle. If you believe it, I want you to shout hallelujah. I want to thank you. I want to bless you today. I can't wait to see you. Tomorrow, we got some surprises the rest of this week. Here in the next day or so, you're going to get the quiz for winning the battle for your mind. And then I want to encourage you to get that back to us in just a few days, and we'll give you the instructions in the email. And if you're not receiving the emails, fill in the virtual school of ministry registration form that's on the page right now so that we can know that you're connected and we can communicate with you. Well, on behalf of Morris and Teresa, on behalf of our team, on behalf of this incredible legacy vision, I want you to know that God is not finished blessing you. Your best is yet to come. We'll see you tomorrow on Live from Legacy.